Chase through the woods. The wind that goes after us is not looking good. I turn to aim and, and realize he's crying. I say it's okay, we won't be dying. For I've got big muscles and the beast doesn't know that. One box to the jaw and the wind that goes out flat. Monsterfuss podcast, keep listening to that. Now? It's very good. And I like the second verse that goes, uh, we ran so fast through the bushes and trees. Rob fell down on his girly knees. The Wendigo came up right behind him and his rectum. It did find it. Whoa, Wendigo, slow down. You're going too fast. I said, whoa, Wendigo, take some time with Rob's ass. <laughs> 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 very good <laughs> very good I enjoyed that that was good I like to take a recovery sip of tea there yeah yeah I did I had to it was like uh, you know on a mile where he's like yeah yeah okay that's good and I'll just try to like you know uh, palm it off <laughs> um, yeah uh, what's up everyone if you haven't guessed already it's Rob and with me is Eamon and we are Monster Fuzz and today, again, if you haven't guessed, we are covering a monster cryptid kind of guy called the Wendigo, who is from sort of, where is he based, Eamon? He's like North American, uh, originating from, so I suppose, any of the regions where they would have had First Nations people, which right. is like all over the place, I suppose. So First Nations is uh, Native Americans, right, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Um, yeah, before we get into it uh, real quick, just wanted to touch base on, uh, again, everyone that's listening to this, three weeks behind or so this episode is, so, you know, we're late to the party, but um, first thing anyway, before I talk about anything else is Monsterfuls Podcast, follow us on all that, yeah, Monsterfuls Podcast on Instagram, yeah, follow that. Also, if anyone is an artist, right, here's a, just a little idea I'm going to put to people, if anyone is an artist and they want to get their artwork featured, uh, drop a message to Monster Fuzz Podcast. Because what I was thinking, Eamon, is you know the way each episode is a different cryptid? Um, yeah. It'd be kind of cool to get like episode-specific artwork for the Spotify episodes. Yeah, that would, would be pretty cool. Yeah. So if, if anyone's into it, like uh, drop us a message. And obviously, at the minute, it's only me and Eamon's mad that actually listen to the podcast. But, you know, mm. in, in, in the future sometime, uh, if, if there's any artists that listen and, and they have their work up on somewhere like DeviantArt and they want to get it out there, just, uh, yeah, do do drop us a line because that'd be pretty dope. Um, yeah, my man's actually drawn a picture of the Wendigo in the kitchen, <laughs> you know, just try, trying to get it ready for this one. Oh, yeah, I actually drew a picture of the Wendigo and I think it's up on my Facebook oh. from years ago. All right, but uh, it's it's like done in pen. It'd be it'd be really shitty. It'd be like, oh, what happened to that monster fuzz podcast? The fucking hobo fuzz podcast. Well, that could be your thing. We could draw like um, stick men, uh, cryptids or <laughs> like. Uh, Emin's actually a good artist. So like, I, when I said drawing, I'll draw stick men, and you can draw good ones. We'll alternate episodes or something. Uh, good is relative. I, I'm not. I'm not not as good as these these bros on deviant art but uh well, you could do a sculpture and take a picture of it hmm. yeah true actually i could do that that's for sure um yeah so the george floyd stuff i just wanted to touch base on that it's like fucking crazy man like it's it's mm. uh again because we're behind the times like hopefully there's some sort of um it'll have progressed a bit because uh, at the minute it's still a shit show you know there's riots and, and and mass protests actually there's not that many riots i don't want to make it out like people are fucking you know there's basically a vast majority is mass protests and they're peaceful so hopefully um hopefully like black people in america can actually make some progress because i do think it's a real shit show over there for them at the minute you know yeah yeah it's a, it's it's, <clears throat> it's a crazy thing like you know because i suppose it's very hard for us to understand mm. what the kind of polarization is between white and 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 black or, or the ethnicity is over there like because we're we're like white irish but we're like we're Irish, so we're not exactly white. Does that make, does that make <laughs> sense? We're like, we're not, you know. So it's weird because we obviously have a lot of different cultures here, 
here who've come in over the past um over the past couple of decades and look there is there is racism in ireland i'm sure but it's 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 nothing like that kind of weird segregation polarization and i get it like you know you're going back to slavery and then human rights and all that but it's 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 really sad to see that this is kind of what's happening now in 2020 you know what i mean it's uh yeah like for the the irish like you know for those listening that aren't from ireland the irish never really had or came from a place of privilege uh even in those white countries we were still looked at as pretty much the bottom mm. of their ladder now you could argue that you know the bottom of the white ladder would have been better than being on the black ladder at the time and, and that and that perhaps is true but um Irish people, you know, there were signs, obviously everyone knows the signs, no blacks, no dogs, no Irish, like that kind of thing. Um, so that was well known. And also there is and there is a history of Irish slaves being kept um, as well. So that, like, it's not as if we were really treated well, you know, and obviously we were mm. oppressed by England for so long and, and stuff like that. There's a, 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 a undercurrent of that in our society as well of oppression so irish people know mm. what it's like to be oppressed as well obviously not to that extent i don't think but you know well there's there, there's definitely similarities in, in in our history you know well i suppose even in northern ireland you think of the segregation up there <clears throat> like there were certain people who if, if you were catholic you weren't able to get past a certain level in mm. the civil service and stuff like that you know so like look I'm not trying to draw an exact comparison, but no. I, you know what I mean? We, we certainly in our history has some, some similar stuff, but I think that the worst thing about all of it, man, is for me at least, is I think human beings are too complex mm. to put in like a good, better, worse kind of a tiered system, you know? Yeah. Like, with, you know, and I think, I think it was, maybe I heard this, it was probably that, I think it was a, one of those Blind Boy podcasts, but he said just that human beings are so complex that we can't, measure ourselves against one another or anyone else like everybody is as important as everybody else and you're just coming from a different set of circumstances and background and environment and all that so it's it's yeah it's really sad to see a part of society be mis mistreated like that yeah um and i and i'm and i'm sure as well on the other hand look i don't know anything about this guy that like knelt on on um the neck yeah like i, I don't know who he is i don't know his back I don't know if he is a racist guy. I don't know, he, he but is, I do imagine that. Yeah, he 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 has a background that's fairly extensively racist. It's fairly right, right, right. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, like I said, I I don't know what his story is, but I would imagine, and uh, certainly not trying to excuse anyone from doing anything, and certainly not that guy, but I imagine in a country like that where the crime rate can be quite intense and people, you know, everybody has guns. It must be a very stressful job. And I imagine maybe that that level of anxiety can cause, and I'm not just talking about, you know, people shooting um, black people in America, which is terrible, but I'd say it's a really awful job to have at times as well. You know, the problem, like, yeah, the, the, the problem is that it's such a, it's, it's just, it's not, it's not even a, a racism problem. It's it goes deeper. It goes so deep that there's yeah. just so much that you have to do to to make it right. And it, it it's it's really bad. Like I mean, it goes. There's things about you know the FBI flooding ghettos with drugs and things like that back back in the day to try yeah, and like, about that. increase poverty in those areas and, and increase sort of um, the lack of community and, and all that stuff. So it's really hard to know. Mm like how to make it right because it, it needs to be from the bottom up it needs to be changed like the whole the whole thing yeah but like you said yeah you're on the you're, you're on the ball by saying um uh, skin color and all that is like it, it doesn't mean anything and, and people have values other than money as well and there's just so much to a mm. person there's just so multifaceted there's you know emotional wealth there's physical wealth uh you know all that other shit it's like whatever but you can meet someone who uh mightn't have anything but is uh a really interesting person in another way you know mm -hmm. he doesn't have any physical possessions but he he has so much to offer and i think there's this like really stereotypical view in america of uh people of race that are from ghettos and things like oh they don't have anything to offer and all that you know and that's how mm. to try and marginalize yeah. them they're so fucking <clears throat> i saw a thing recently um it was about sweden and it was some newscaster in america talking about how sweden was a dump of a country because it was socialist yeah <clears throat> and like one of their things is like for 
free college, but then everyone will just stay in college. How stupid. And Sweden were like, we have like the highest employment rate. We're like the number six highest employment rate in, in the world, which is, mm-hmm. you know, quite a bit better than America. But he basically just like dismantled all their arguments. But that's the thing about America. It's it's almost like they they talk about it as the, the you know, the, the, the fucking country where your dreams can come true and you can manifest destiny and all this bullshit. But the whole system is rigged in a way to just keep people who are born into poorer families poor. Like that's what it is you know like it, it doesn't i don't yeah you're right like the ladder the rungs of the ladder are broken at the bottom and, yeah totally. you know like like um so more white people can start on the higher rungs of the ladder and then there's the broken ladder which the, uh, the broken rungs at the bottom are where all the black people black people and impoverished people have to start and look it's not just a black thing like there's impoverished white people there's impoverished uh yeah. native people Asian people like it, it it doesn't really matter but it all um it all just yeah it just it, it's a shit show really and it it's it's more yeah. obvious over there because I don't know why like I don't know why it's it's so blatant over there it's a strange thing I suppose it's just, it just comes down to like the whole slave history and all that over there because we didn't really have that in Ireland you know yeah yeah this is it like i mean we i think we were slaves but like we were brought elsewhere do you know what i mean like it wasn't in in ireland yeah the the it's yeah like look you know yourself man it's such a big problem it's it's like there's so many facets to it and every time someone else comes along and gives you a different bit of information that you weren't aware of you're like oh shit i never thought about you know that or that that part of it but i suppose just for me that the only thing i can't really i can't understand or no, not rather, not that I can't understand. I just think that if you have people in a situation where they're impoverished, their environment, like the, the best way, say, that they can make money is by turning to illicit trade or something like that. Mm-hmm. And and you put them in a position where there's not many opportunities to get out of that. Mm-hmm. Like you're not, you can't say that your country is a good country. Like a country owes its citizens. They're going to be paying taxes. They're going to be contributing to the country. I think we need to take care of the people who are at the bottom of the ladder always. Like the people who are making shit loads of money, they can pay extra tax. Like that, that yeah. shouldn't be an issue. Like if, if you're making a lot of money, you pay a bit more tax. You're still going to be rich. Like how many, how much money do you need yeah, yeah. in order for, you know, to, like you have Jeff Bezos who's about to become a trillionaire. Meanwhile, the people who work for him <laughs> yeah, are yeah. running running around this 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 warehouse and if they like don't get enough poly pockets or whatever the <laughs> fuck they're they're gonna get like let go like that's just i don't know it's just crazy man it's just it's not it's not an american dream it's an american nightmare like it's your not con- it's your, terrible your country should only be judged based on its uh worst off citizens you know and show yeah. me what those people are like uh, and what type of things that they have and what their prospects are and then you know you can be judged by that metric which i think is more accurate and then when you look at what's going on in america at the bottom of the ladder it's just absolutely terrible um but quickly uh before we move on um if you're irish english you're not from america or maybe even if you're from america and you don't know what to do there's a few NAACP is a good place to donate your money. Um, Communities United Against Police Brutality is another good one. And I suppose those type of organizations would put pressure on police departments and things like that to try and, you know, legislate and and, and sort of, yeah, just a bit of external outside pressure is always good. Um, And there's also the George floyd i donated to it yesterday and i'm trying to get the right name for it here but anyway so it's the george floyd family fund so if you want to donate to that uh you can do too and yeah th- those are just places to start there's a lot more so black lives matter is another um, movement that you can donate to so that's a, a good one as well to just try and um you know just support the cause a bit i mean look if you're posting a fucking black picture on instagram that's not going to do jack shit you know just don't let a fiver whatever it's not much a cost of, it's the cost of a cup of coffee happy days and also before i i forget from now on uh on the podcast i should have mentioned this at the start really but uh i'm going to timestamp every episode so like check the description of the episode for the timestamp and that will be us going on topic to the episode title so in the about of the episode so on spotify or wherever just check that and there will be a timestamp 
with the time where we move on to topic about the Wendigo or about the Bunyip, about Makele Membe, whatever. Um, and I think that's the fairest way to do it, Eamon, isn't it? Yeah, because I, 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 I'm well aware that a lot of people probably don't want to listen to us two dopes talking shite <laughs> at the start of the episode. So, yeah, just skip it, man. Just skip it. Get yeah, right by it's, it. It's, it's, look, we, we don't want it to be... You know, we want to be able to talk about whatever we want to talk about, and also we do realize that people only want to hear about mad, scary shit. So that's fine. Um, yeah, just go to the timestamp. You can skip the start. It's all good. Um, we still love you. Um, <laughs> so happy days. But Emin, let's get into the Wendigo. What is the crack with the Wendigo? The Wendigo. Yeah. So I've always been a, a fan of the Wendigo. Um little bit of trivia just before we start the Mm -hmm. first time i ever heard of the wendigo was uh because wolverine's first appearance is in an issue of the incredible hulk where Mm -hmm. the hulk is fighting the wendigo and all three of them fight each other um yes yeah oh Mm -hmm. awesome awesome Mm -hmm. Um, Uh, so that that was the first that i ever heard of the wendigo there's a is is there a, a marvel comic where logan is actually the wendigo as well Oh fuck! I may- maybe yeah. I, I think heard of it. I think when I was doing my research, because I remembered the Wendigo. When you mentioned the name Wendigo, I was like, okay, I know that from Marvel Comics. That's where I know. It. And so I googled it, and yeah, I mentioned that. I think there's like an alternate universe um, comic where Logan is the Wendigo and he's part of Captain America's team. Oh, okay, that's awesome. So it's like a what if kind of yeah. a story. Is that what they call those ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, deadly, deadly. Yeah, it's a pretty, it's an interesting, this is a really interesting um, monster because it's sort of, it's part monster, it's part folklore, it's part spirit, it's part mental illness. Like there's there's a lot going on with this one, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, It's a really strange one, but one I've always been kind of fascinated by the idea of the Wendigo. Um, And the more we looked into it, because I wasn't actually fully aware of what created a Wendigo. Um, There's a little spoiler here so if you don't want to hear the spoiler like skip ahead 30 seconds it's about a video game on the ps4 um i'm saying the name of it now and then also stuff about wendigos (laughs) um so until dawn is a game on the ps4 it's like a choose your own scare type adventure oh yeah 10 hours long or something it's kind of like an interactive story but that one's pretty cool because that has uh wendigos in it all right They're, they're pictured kind of differently but that was where i first heard about the um the stuff we'll get into later about the cannibalism and you know taboo sort of stuff that that creates a wendigo um and then from that point i was i was pretty i was pretty interested in them you know i thought they were pretty cool uh cryptid oh okay i, did, I didn't know that they were in that game I, I haven't actually played that one but i've heard good things so if people want to, mm. s- to follow up on this episode and get spooked check out uh until dawn yeah mm, yeah good game good game um and sorry yeah i've obviously spoiled that for you you in the, <laughs> in the in the in the middle of that so I can't apologies. Skip, I can't skip ahead thirty seconds. <laughs> um, okay, so to give you an idea, so the Wendigo is a mythological creature or an evil spirit from the folklore of the First Nations Algonquin tribes based in the northern forests of Nova Scotia, the east coast of Canada, and the Great Lakes region of Canada and the United States. Right, so it's uh, all the cold places, basically, right? Yeah, a lot of, lot of coldness here. The Wendigo is, um, a lot of times, it's it's kind of synonymous with, with ice, with snow, with, with terrible temperatures. Um, and as we'll see later, kind of synonymous with just decay, almost. Because, you know, snow, winter, there's no blossoms. Um, so that the, the kind of motif of it, I suppose, is a little bit like that as well. Hmm. And uh, um, for people to uh, just get a quick visual of the Wendigo, it's basically like was well, like a humanoid figure with a deer head and antlers, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Sometimes it's depicted as kind of like a white, almost decaying. So its rib cage is kind of popping out through it. And hmm. um, sometimes its its head is it can be it can have like a deer skull sometimes, right. and other times it can have an action kind of a deer's head and um, the antlers come out of it and it, it usually has like it's depicted as having very long arms with very long nails you know um terrifying really scary thing yeah and actually there's other depictions 
versions of it where it's it's almost like a Sasquatch type thing, which are there. That's mostly like I think it was maybe an episode of Supernatural and probably that Wolverine comic too. It's more like a white Sasquatch. Yeah, kind it looks of like a thing. an abominable snowman, which we will be yeah, covering yeah. soon. Yeah exactly yeah so the the one that seems to be more most common i suppose is a humanoid elongated sort of figure where the arms are longer than usual long nails and either a skull of a deer with antlers or a deer's face with antlers like a humanoid deer i suppose yeah and um it's described as a monster with some characteristics of a human or as a spirit who has possessed a human being and sorry a human being and made them become monstrous its influence is said to invoke acts of murder insatiable greed cannibalism and the cultural taboos against such behaviors Mm. so yeah that's interesting yeah it's a yeah it's it's all it's all tied in with basically transgression um Mm. and doing something against your community against your tribe um it's known by by several names so windigo is kind of the most popular one mm. but there's also Witigo, Witiko, Witigo <laughs> um, and all of these things kind of roughly translate to the evil spirit that devours mankind. Um, yeah that's a it's an interesting name that kind of sounds like an STD or something Witigo or something sounds like something you'd catch off someone. Yeah I think I got a cream for it before <laughs> um, but it, it did take a while to shift. It did yeah, take a while to shift. I think I had a case of Witigo as well before for sure. Um <laughs> The creature lends its name. Raw with ego. <laughs> Raw dog and with ego virus. Um, yeah. So the creature lends its name to the controversial modern medical term, Wendigo psychosis, described by psychiatrists as a culture bound syndrome with symptoms such as intense craving for human flesh and fear of becoming a cannibal. In some indigenous communities, environmental destruction and insatiable greed are also seen as a manifestation of Wendigo psychosis. So, yeah, so the term Wendigo psychosis seems to be, it is medical and it has been used in in, uh, those communities and tribes um, by individuals to describe someone who has basically gone mental and is trying to fucking chew on legs and shit so it is it's a it's a real thing and i will definitely touch into that more later on uh as we as we get deeper into the episode i suppose yeah 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 absolutely we'll uh, look, look at a few different cases um and also there's there was actually a website um i'll put a a stick a link in the description but the the website was like it was all about wendigos like it was like where to find them where they're most likely to be it was a really like a lot of stuff in it obviously see either seen by someone as a a massive hoax or someone who you know there are people who believe that these things are out there um but it was almost like a looking for bigfoot type thing but just wendigo instead of bigfoot which was which was kind of interesting Mm, that sounds interesting for sure yeah Mm. yeah so i suppose to, to give you more of a lowdown on the on the Wendigo, um, and it's kind of tapping into what we've talked about as well. It's basically believed to be the spirit of winter and a symbol of the danger of selfishness. Um, although beliefs vary, the Wendigo is generally considered a horrifying entity with an insatiable taste for human flesh. Anyone who encounters a Wendigo risks being devoured or even being turned into a Wendigo. Oh. So according to... Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, so that's... So basically... It, it, if you see one you get turned into one so it's kind of like a medusa thing you look into its eyes and then you know instead of being turned to stone you turn into a fucking devouring deer headed uh, loincloth wearing creature yeah I think it tries to like get in your head kind of like tries to turn you you know oh, sort okay. of tempt you it's almost like um, it's like a, what Jesus in the desert and Satan's Adam for 40 days or whatever telling him you know he's hungry he's thirsty telling him to, to use his powers, you know, to yield to him. and He'll give him this, that, and the other thing. Ah, um, yes. So I think it's a similar kind of a thing. Right. But according to uh, a gentleman called Sean Smallman, who is the author of Dangerous Spirits, The Windigo in Myth and History, it was a means of defining moral social behavior, which could serve as a warning against greed and selfishness. One could also become a Wendigo if a shaman cursed them and sometimes if they dreamed of the Wendigo. So the myth is kind of used to explain what we would now call mental illness. All right. Or 
other similar afflictions oh. and maybe it's even similar to uh in medieval times if someone say killed someone or committed suicide or you mm. know some sort of tragic act um uh, they would often say that they've been possessed by the devil or by, by demons as a way of trying to understand that kind of behavior you know yeah i was gonna say like apparently i know a ton of people who have been possessed by the wendigo because i know a lot of fucking mental people so you know <laughs> Just apparently the, the Wendigo is more prevalent uh, than we think, uh, so it's just anyone yeah. That's I think a bit I mad. might have like a yeah. I might have low level Wendigo then. <laughs> you know, what I mean? like your anxiety starts sparking up for no reason. It's just like like a baby Wendigo, kind of like a cute decomposing deer humanoid or something. I've got a mild uh, just of just, the just annoying you. Can you imagine? Uh, yeah, I got I got the Wendigos. Can you imagine looking in the mirror and instead of seeing your face, you see a fucking decomposing deer head? That'd be pretty gnarly. Ooh check please yeah no i don't think <laughs> i don't think i'd like that no no that'd be fairly spooky so yeah if you're ever feeling a bit mental uh you can just say you have a bad case of the wendigos then people will understand exactly what you mean and uh i will be very sympathetic but um they were, yeah. <laughs> they were strongly associated with winter the north coldness famine and starvation the wendigo is seen as the embodiment of gluttony greed and excess Never satisfied after killing and consuming one person, they're constantly searching for new victims. So the famine the famine link is a strong link because, you know, you're talking about a um, very cold, famine-like, ravished areas, I suppose you could say, because of, of the winter that, you know, food was scarce and people, after a certain amount of starvation, would probably start looking at a leg a little bit differently, right? Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're starving to death, mm. um, the likelihood is someone is going to die first in mm. those sort of conditions, you know. And you know, it's it's like that line in what the Dark Knight where where the Joker says, "We'll see how loyal a hungry dog is." You know, do do you give up your humanity by consuming another human if it's to survive? Yeah. I mean, I, what what part would you eat first if you're eating someone? I definitely eat the dick probably, just because like. Like, I suppose it's the most sausage-like, so you could kind of fool yourself <laughs> into thinking that it was some sort of, like, hot dog type thing. Um, and also, uh, probably just to, you know, probably probably says something about my latent homosexuality. <laughs> just <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be the first thing that comes to mind. Um, no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. But, I mean, if I had to, it'd probably be a better story if you had the dick. If, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It could be more, you're like, I had a finger, they'd be it, like, yeah. It would break the ice, like, you know, the tribe finds you after <laughs> after the, the famine and, like, the thought they'd lost you and Jimmy and to find you and Jimmy's dead and, and you're like, oh, I'm sorry, guys, I ate Jimmy and they're like, oh, and then you're like, but I had him dick first and they're like, ha, 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 you silly goose. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> that's Eamon, he's always, always playing. Yeah. Always playing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think I if it was me and you, I'd eat your ass first anyway. Would you eat me? You might ask for dessert, or what ask would you have? First. Like, would you have my ask for dessert? But oh, ask first. Oh, what would yeah. you eat for dessert? For dessert, I see. Ass is the best meat, by the way. So that's just yeah, uh, yeah. It's not, not about my ass. Though I don't really have much of an ass. No, um, but I don't have much of an ass. I bet there's more meat in other parts of me than my ass. I've got enough ass to feed a village now. To be honest, which is a powerful, yeah. powerful legs, powerful arse. It's all. <laughs> It's all powered. Fro- frog billing <laughs> over there. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I think I think Irish is the best meat and uh, the easy, the most accessible. And then for dessert, I don't know really. What would you eat if you were to eat someone for dessert? What would you have last? Um, mm. I'm trying to think what, what would, what would be the sweet, the I nicest. suppose. Yeah. Uh, would gut like the fat of the gut? Would there be some kind of like sweet you could just put on a on the fire? And I'm actually you getting kind of hungry talking about this which is making me nervous uh uh yeah because you know like like a, a pork belly fat like yeah, yeah. it's kind of sweet yeah so maybe maybe that'd be the move caramelized nipples oh shit son um and you could have like a you could have um you could have like a what would you say you know the way of fennel but it would be like just a little sort of sprinkle of pubes around <laughs> the caramelized nipples. pubes garnish <laughs> pubes garnish with like a. Uh... A fucking eyeball juice reduction. Um, <laughs> that'd be the one. That's how you do it. So uh, we've taken a turn for the grim there. Oh, yikes. Um, so 
Let's uh, go on to the Native American descriptions of the Wendigo. Mm. So do you so want to tell, people... tell people about oh, Basil or will I tell people? Yeah, it's uh, whoever wants to. Right, well, easy. I'll, well, I'll tell about Basil then and, and you can go okay. on to the next one after Basil. But Basil H. Johnston and Ojibwe, Ojibwe, yeah, Ojibwe, I suppose, teacher and scholar from Ontario gives a description of a Wendigo. So this is a... Um, a scholar dude basically telling us what, what it's like and he says that the wendigo was gaunt to the point of emaciation its desiccated skin pulled tightly over its bones with its bones pushing out against its skin its complexion the ash gray of death and its eyes pushed back deep into their sockets the wendigo looked like a gaunt skeleton recently disinterred from a grave what lips it had were tattered and bloody unclean and suffering from suppuration of the flesh that's a good word suppuration is that supposed Ooh. to be separation or no um no i think it's sup suppor 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 let's All see right. what google says yeah, you can do it here yeah what does that say suppuration define suppuration um it doesn't have a definition <laughs> apparently yeah. uh I maybe that. i spelled something wrong as possible <laughs> uh so apparently yeah separation of the flesh is a good word anyway let's just run with it um yeah. the, the use it people use it yeah the wendigo gave off a strange and eerie odor of decay and decomposition of death and corruption so basically yeah it's basically like we described it's not a pleasant looking thing and was there a Wendigo in Evil Dead, the movie, or was that just a deer mounted yeah, thing? Yeah, I think that was just the deer, the deer head went bananas, didn't it? Was um, it, yeah, it was laughing and, it and everything. laughing at him, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was in Evil Dead 2, I think. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, um, do you want to go on to the next paragraph there? Yeah, yeah. So... In Ojibwe, Eastern Cree, West Main Swampy Cree, Nasakapi, and Inulor, Wendigos are often described as giants that are many times larger than human beings. A characteristic absent from myths in other Algonquian cultures, whenever a Wendigo ate another person, it would grow in proportion to the meal it had just eaten, so it could never be full. Therefore, Wendigos are portrayed as simultaneously gluttonous and extremely thin due to starvation so that's like that game what's that one calamari damacy is that it where you go around collecting everything and you grow bigger oh the japanese one is it yeah yeah you just see you yeah, keep eating it, everything on the map and your character just gets bigger and bigger and bigger it's similar i know that the i, I can't remember if it's chinese or japanese but they have um it's their way of describing certain types of uh like i suppose mental dis-ease which is they call it the hungry ghost and the idea is it's that this thing that sort of attaches itself to you and it has this massive belly but only a, a mouth that's like a as it's straw it's sorry it's straw thin right. and it's trying to take your energy for itself but it can't take enough to fill its belly because it's the way its lips are so it just stays on you forever kind of trying to drink your you know your anxiety your sadness all this sort of stuff Right. So I guess a similar kind of um, similar kind of an idea, almost of as that that Wendigo that can't ever be full, and as a consequence is just constantly hungry and hungry and hungry. Hmm. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so uh, in the past, this occurred more often when Indians and settlers found themselves stranded in the bitter snows and the ice of the North Woods. Sometimes stranded for days, any survivors might have felt compelled to cannibalize the dead in order to survive. Other versions of the versions of the I say virgins of the legend site that humans <laughs> who displayed extreme greed, gluttony and excess might also be possessed by a Wendigo. Thus the myth served as a method of encouraging cooperation and moderation. So yeah, it seems like it it was sort of a, a almost like a tale to try and keep people from doing really depraved acts, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like the way that the they describe a Wendigo here, it's almost as if the individual is out for themselves. You know yeah. what I mean? They're not contributing to the tribe. They're not contributing to the people. And it's funny in in like what we were sort of talking about at the at the very start of the podcast with with the riots in, in, in America and stuff. Mm -hmm. the, a Wendigo is almost like capitalism unchecked. Yeah, yeah. You know, where it's just like, oh, just make all the money and don't worry about anyone. Don't help anybody. You know, don't do just, yeah, let's keep shitting on people and we'll just make sure we're all big and strong and well fed. 
so it's which is a you know yeah um is is it possible that then like the basically this was a a sort of a, a tale to promote um togetherness in extreme time in times of extreme famine where basically things would get touchy things would get tense you know you might have like the dominant male in the group of humans wanting to say right okay i'm just gonna fucking eat everyone like i i'm hungry we're like i'm tired of this i can if i eat people i can probably survive this winter and then move on to better pastures you know yeah absolutely and i mean i guess if you're you're talking talking about native american um lore and uh-huh. mythology and sort of archetypes these archetypes this kind of stuff is is seen <clears throat> you know there's the like cain in the bible who was greedy and didn't like the way that god treated him didn't like the suffering so he killed his brother these archetypes that that sort of go against their community and, and become like cain in some stories is like the father of vampires and all this sort of stuff uh-huh. Which again, I don't think is in the Bible, but uh, you know, that's it's something else. <laughs> uh, I, um, I like that, but shit, there though. is, <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, and what it does show as well, you know, that 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 part in the Bible, uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto yourself, turn the other cheek, that kind of uh, passivity, I'd say, um, in terms of like, don't strike first, don't kill, don't mm. you know, do not kill is one of the the Ten Commandments. So it's as if even before Christianity, because obviously Native Americans wouldn't have had Christianity mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, until until the settlers came, like they have the same ideas there. And this is maybe their way of saying, and it's a way cooler way of saying it as well, you know, like rather than, oh no, just be sound to be nice to people and, and be good. This is more like, no, you turn into a di- giant fucking <laughs> and decompose and deer. So fucking cop yourself on, right. you know, it, it's, uh, it's, it's the same thing. You're very religious today, I mean. Yeah. Was I, all right, I, man? <laughs> oh man, I'm having an old breakdown. Like, I'm just, you know what I mean? Just, I've been st- stuck in the house for a long time. And, uh, the sure everything starts to look like a cross after a while. Actually, I have my, it's funny, the room I'm in right now, uh, I'm in my parents' house till I go back to Dublin. And my old communion little <laughs> missile that I got when I was seven is actually in front of me. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> You know, God bless America and no place else. Uh, no, <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, but I suppose there's there's some other there's some other ways that the guys that the Native Americans talk about it as well. So mm-hmm. Native American versions of the Wendigo speak of a gigantic spirit over 15 feet tall that had once been human but had been transformed into a creature by the use of magic. Though all of the descriptions of the creature vary slightly, the Wendigo is generally said to have glowing eyes long yellowed fangs, terrible claws, and overly long tongues. Sometimes they are described as having sallow, yellowish skin, and other times depicted to be covered with matted hair. The creature is said to have a number of skills and powers, including stealth. It's a near-perfect hunter. It knows and uses every inch of its territory and can control the weather through the use of dark magic. Um, they are also portrayed uh, similarly as we talked about before they're gluttonous but emaciated from starvation now there is another thing and it's not in this note right. but apparently wendigos are able to mimic the sound of people you know okay. so if you were in the forest and you heard your dad going hey, come here it's dinner time but like you know your dad doesn't live in british columbia or wherever you are so uh it can use stuff like that it can sound like a dog it can sound like a someone you love someone you know so it's similar i think skinwalkers i don't know if you ever heard of those no no. they're another native american uh kind of cryptid and they're sort of people who can shape shift but they can also lure you by using the the voice of somebody that you that you care about or that you know uh to bring you away and then devour you i suppose oh okay so yeah that's really interesting um it's it kind of seems like you know as we're reading this it seems like it's yeah it's just like sort of um you don't don't fuck around because the wendigo will get you he's a better hunter than you he knows the land better than you Mm. and if the weather goes bad it's your fault because you're fucking around with the wendigo do you know that kind of way yeah and it's, absolutely it's, and and these yeah these are all the things that like for a native american person to know the land to have control of the land to hunt like that's mm. that's the stuff you really need you know that's very, so yeah, it's, that's it's almost point. like yeah yeah it's, it's yeah like, it's interesting man 
Yeah, it's like they have to. It's like because a lot of these kind of creatures are like the baddest motherfucker that you can imagine. It's like they were designed to to scare the baddest motherfucker you can imagine. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, because the the Indians, like you know, I'm not sure if it's where the the term savage came from, mm -hmm. but when you read some of those depictions of Indians, um scalping people yeah, yeah. and the way they would attack like if you look at the the start of that movie the remnant mm -hmm. there's a really good scene where the indians are attacking the uh the fur traders yeah and it's just like whoa like it, it really it really hits you there's another there's a good book by cormac mccarthy called blood meridian right. and he there's a there's a part in that where he talks about these cowboys just basically getting railroaded by these indians and it's like it's the most graphic, violent thing I've ever read. Like it's, I was just like, Jesus Christ! Um, by the way, like there's there. Yeah, they're, they deserve all the like at the time solidarity with my Indian brothers as well, right? Because mm. fuck me, that they, they were absolutely decimated by uh, white people that arrived on the continent, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, to to. I mean that. I mean that's interesting to sort of. You're, we're talking about Black Lives Matter and mm -hmm. you know the kind of divide between white and Black America, um, and you realize that now. Obviously, with Black people, it's no fault of their own that no. white people brought them over as slaves. But um, and again, the Americans aren't even the original Americans are English. Like mm -hmm. you know, it's like they're not even American in 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 sort of the, the long history of it. But the native people are the first. They're the first to be there. They're the indigenous. They're they were like the first ever american residents i suppose uh it's proposed that they crossed a, a now uh vanished uh land bridge between china and uh america that's how they originally arrived there mm. yeah so, it's uh, totally possible yeah because i know even in in uh ireland there's that part in northern ireland where they thought there was some sort of land bridge connecting to um england at some mm -hmm. point mm -hmm. you know and i sure like the whole world i suppose at some point was you know pangea and all that stuff yeah it's just when when like humans sort of rose to prominence like that was also that was obviously a lot after pangea and stuff like that so the world was very much broken up at that stage but there's a lot of cool just to go off on a little sort of side tangent about uh some irish native american history um it's really cool that and uh, it does actually tie into this episode because we, we are talking about famine and things like that so for those of you ignorant to the situation like the, the irish famine was mainly brought on by the fact that uh britain controlled our island uh it, it wasn't because our lands were not fertile because a lot of people a lot of people say oh well like you know you were relying on one crop or you only had this or you had that but really what was happening is that at the time the english had all of our land and controlled what farmers produced and also controlled what farmers could keep for themselves and as a result it really made things hard in the famine so uh during the famine um, a native american tribe actually donated i think it was like 700 dollars at the time which doesn't sound like much but like at the time it was a, a vast sum of money um so we recently donated money to them to uh to make it right and there's actually a native american monument in ireland uh called um i think it's kindred spirits and it commemorates it's in hang on here i've got it up it's in middleton county cork so if anyone irish is interested in checking out this sculpture kindred spirits is a large stainless steel outdoor sculpture in middleton county cork uh, it commemorates the 1847 donation by the native american choctaw people to irish famine relief during the great hunger despite the choctaw themselves living in hardship and poverty and having recently endured the trial of tears while records of the exact amount of the donation vary a figure usually given is oh sorry 170 dollars which is about 4700 in uh, you know inflation adjusted dollars but some people reckon that it was higher it was twenty thousand. so that's just a little cool thing and there's a sculpture oh. it's a really cool sculpture it's a nine foot stainless steel eagle feather thing and it's, it goes around in a circle have you ever seen it Evan? no no no, it's really it's a really nice stainless steel sculpture and basically it's like yeah it's like six feathers or whatever 
nine, sorry, are arranged in a circle and they're all sort of up, going up in the air, standing up. And uh, yeah, I, I think you really told cool. me about this before, didn't you? Like it was a while ago you told me about it. Could have been, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were talking that. about this and you were saying, oh, it's really interesting. Yeah, no, that's that's fantastic. It's a really interesting piece of history, so, especially at that time. It's like, how would they even know what was yeah, going on? You know? Yeah, yeah it's, it's incredible. So, yeah, so at the time, the Native Americans knew how bad Wendigo was. So they sent uh, money to <clears throat> the Wendigo stricken Irish people, I guess you could say. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. At that time, I mean, we were some stuff I've heard of that just. I think it was some um some old historical paper about a guy who arrived at Ireland and how he described the famine. And man, it was harrowing, like just people clawing through the mud and emaciated, dead on, like just, just awful stuff, you know? Um, some some good reading for uh, people as well, if they want to read up on that subject, is uh, <coughs> Under the Hawthorne Tree. They're kind of like, I suppose they're kids' oh, books, yeah. but they're not really kids' books. Um, mm. And then there are some really nice sculptures in Dublin city of the famine, um, which shows basically really emaciated people and they're walking along uh, the quay front there in Dublin uh, along the river or whatever. Um, and it's really interesting, but to get back on topic, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about Wendigo psychosis. So Ooh. the legend lends its name to the disputed modern medical term Wendigo psychosis, which is considered by some psychiatrists to be a syndrome that creates an intense craving for human flesh and a fear of becoming a cannibal. Ironically, this psychosis is said to occur within people living around the Great Lakes of Canada and the United States. Wendigo psychosis usually develops in the winter in individuals who are isolated by heavy snow for long periods. Okay, so think as we were talking about starvation. Uh, yeah, you're on your own. It's not looking good. The initial symptoms are poor appetite, nausea and vomiting. Subsequently, the individual develops a delusion of being transformed into a Wendigo monster. People who have Wendigo psychosis increasingly see others around them as being edible. At the same time, they have an exaggerated fear of becoming cannibals. So I suppose what you're looking at with Wendigo psychosis is as you starve more and more, uh, the people around you start looking more like food items and less like people. Mm. So you start to get really concerned about becoming a cannibal, right? Because obviously you're dealing with yeah. this feeling of guilt <clears throat> or whatever, you know? Well, I think it's like, you know, you and me talking about eating dicks at the start of the, <laughs> like, actually not just eating, like not eating dicks, but eating dicks, you know what I mean? Right, straight, so. straight eating dicks. Yeah. Um, but uh, <clears throat> so for the last, I think this is my third day, I have been doing that intermittent fasting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. out of curiosity because i did I, I think it was this day last week my dad does like a fast every wednesday mm -hmm. and i did it with him just to see what it was like and it was not fun mm -hmm. but there was an element of like i was like all right well you know you're really hungry or not even you weren't really hungry you just you wanted to eat yeah. for whatever reason but you you know you had the discipline to say no i'm not going to so i was like oh, i might try this intermittent fasting thing because people say it's really good you know for you your brain shoots a bit faster blah 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 um so this is the third day of that in a row. So I'm eating between 12 and six right. and then I don't eat at all out, outside of that. I might have like a little like cup of, uh, I have some sachets of miso soup. So they're like okay. 20 calories or something like that. Yeah. Um, and I think if you break 50 calories, your fast will break, but if you don't, you're okay. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I've been doing that and yeah, I can like, sort of resonate with me when you're talking about people being locked away in the snow, starving, not eating. Cause when we were talking about eating dicks, I was like, oh man, just like pepper up a dick, just put it on the barbecue, mm, you know, to just take, you could even use the foreskin as some garnish. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Put a bit of yeah. foreskin with a bit of fucking plowman's relish. Mash oh, it up. Oh, delicious. Um, but yeah, I suppose it's like the guilt you have after you go on twinks.com, is it? Uh, <laughs> um, no, because I think Twink is a brilliant singer from Ireland and I oh, enjoy her work. That's her, that's her website, is it? 
<laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I've never been to Twinks.com. Well, but like you know what? Place. You know what? If people <laughs> want to go to Twinks.com, the more power to them, man. Look at you're just you're just an arbiter of hate in this world. No, 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 no. I, no, no. Let's not get a let's, <laughs> let's not get a twist in there now. Evan's trying to Evan's trying to make me out to be some type of bigot, which is uh, disgraceful. Carry on all together. It's only the shame that you feel when you're going to Twinks.com. Of course. Oh, and yeah. you're saying I shouldn't feel shame. Because, yeah, well, like, why would you feel bad about it? Yeah, you as an individual would feel shame <laughs> going on <to> Twinks.com. <laughs> but uh, it's like that thing. What was it in the office where he's not allowed by HR to say he hates somebody? <laughs> so he has to say he hates everything they choose to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh lordy but uh anyway yeah do you want to go on about the common responses that people see when they, yeah uh, yeah they get into it so the most common response when a person shows signs of wendigo psychosis was a curing attempt by traditional native healers in cases of the past if these attempts failed and if the possessed person began either to threaten those around them or to act violently or antisocially they were executed there have also been reports regarding this psychosis dating back hundreds of years so there's a little uh, a little quotey quote here mm-hmm. we're going to read out do you want to try and do this in a in an indian voice oh indian vo- interesting what yeah that uh, be? what caused uh, no um that sounds i can do like I'll, if i try and do indian i'll sound like fucking dr ravi uh i'll sound like <laughs> the, the other type of indian um, but I can do. But I caused can... us greater concern. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, we might get in trouble for uh, doing that accents all the time as well. By the way, because we're racially stereotyped. Nah, but man, we're not saying it with fucking hate in our hearts. Like True. I like to do accents of the people from Cork because I think it's a funny sounding accent but there's some of my favorite people in ireland true yeah true this is, this is very true um i can't really do the accent but what i can do is i'll just do it like dramatically i suppose so okay that's good what caused us greater concern was the intelligence that met us upon entering the lake namely that the men deputed by our conductor for the purpose of summoning the nations to the north sea and assigning them a rendezvous where they were to await our coming had met their death the previous winter in a very strange manner. These, can I just say it? These fucking articles that we read from like the 1800s, 1700s, whatever the fuck, they always throw me off because I try and read them like it's modern English. And then I'm like, what am I? Oh, after yeah. after the first two sentences, I'm like, what am I even reading here? I'm like, is this a different it's like, it's like reading Shakespeare or something. Yeah, it's You're really like, strange. Romeo, where fort are thou? Yes. Do you know that Romeo, Romeo, where fort art thou? Doesn't yeah. mean like, where are you, Romeo? It means like, what are you? Yeah, like that's now. That's yeah, what are you talking about, Shakespeare? Yeah, what are you, what are you on? Go Is back to ha- your iambic pentameters and don't be annoying. He's hoofing Jenkin. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what he's doing. Uh, where, okay, so let's let's get back to this, right? So, these poor men, according to the report given to us, were seized with an ailment unknown to us, but not very unusual among the people we were seeking. They are afflicted with neither lunacy, hypochondria, nor frenzy, but have a combination of all these species of disease, which affects their imaginations and causes them a more than canine hunger. This makes them so ravenous for human flesh that they pounce upon women, children, and even upon men, twinks.com, like veritable werewolves, and devour them voraciously, without being able to appease or glut their appetite. Ever seeking fresh prey, and more greedily the more they eat, this ailment attacked our deputies, and as death in the soul, as death is the sole remedy among these peop- simple people for checking such acts of murder. Fuck it, they were slain in order to stay the course <laughs> of their madness. So basically, no. yeah. So the, the only cure for these dudes was to get shot in the head, right? Yeah, pretty much. Like once they've gone, they've pretty gone. Much. When it's like a, it's like a, a fire sale. When it's gone, it's gone. Not right. going back. Selling um, these goods. That's the end of it. Now, uh, to to sort of <clears throat> go off on a little bit of a, a side note here, isn't there some type of disease that you can get, or or so, some some type of ailment from actually eating human flesh? Like, isn't that a thing? I want to say it's the Genjes virus, but I could be getting that wrong. 
But I think uh, there is some sort of virus Kuru. you get from eating human flesh. Kuru. Well, that's not the same word. So, okay. <laughs> so Kuru is a disease of the nervous system. So, okay. Kuru is a very rare disease. It is caused by an infectious protein, a prion, found in contaminated human brain tissue. Right, so if you eat the brains of someone. Kuru was found among people from New Guinea who practiced a form of cannibalism in which they ate the brains of dead people as part of a funeral ritual. This practice stopped in 1960, but cases of Kuru were reported for many years afterward because the disease has a long incubation period. The incubation period is the time it takes for symptoms to appear after being exposed to the agent that causes the disease. Okay, so uh, it can cause, it's got similar um, sort of uh, symptoms as mad cow disease. So is it possible that from eating human flesh, they were literally driven mad? Like there was, there was mm-hmm. actually a, a real life consequence. It's not just like you know, you can't just eat some on ours first and then fucking go back to playing a game of soccer or something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, it well, yeah, you're you're right. Like it could be that maybe is it this because I often think folklore, myth, archetypes they come from things that are real. Right. So if there is some sort of a like to eat someone, as we were saying, if you're in caught in the snow, there's nothing to eat. People are dying. You'd probably be like, OK, I'm going to eat that guy. Like, I don't have any other choices here. I can make a fire and eat that guy. Um, and did that cause maybe some sort of sickness? And so they were kind of saying here, we got to stop people eating other people when they're all probably going to die out in the snow anyway. Hmm, yeah, it's, um, it's probably. So, yeah, I wonder. Yeah, I think I wonder did a guy like come over a mountain. <clears throat> go down into a village like some native american dude he comes down into some other guy's village like jim's village and he sees a lot of fucking people eating each other ass first and gone mental and he's just like right okay fuck this and he goes back to his tribe and he's like guys there's uh the wendigos over there anyway so don't be eating people ass first mm, you know? yeah yeah absolutely uh, speaking of eating people ass first <laughs> this the most famous case of uh wendigo psychosis is the swift runner case right. um so we have a little paragraph about it here but i want to qualify it uh, just at the start because i was listening to a different um after i put the notes in i was kind of just doing catch up you know of anything that i missed and didn't get a chance to put into this but basically there was um there was a plains cree trapper from alberta named swift drummer right swift runner swift runner that's right. his name i thought i said swift drummer anyway <laughs> swift runner now before we get into what actually happened to him apparently swift runner got a taste of whiskey from the white man of course right um and he just like he lost his life for months and months and months to the whiskey Uh, he was abusive towards his wife and he eventually moved off by himself um out to the middle of nowhere sort of i I suppose kind of got clean or whatever and Uh then sent for his his uh his family to come and join him and they did right ah. now here's the interesting thing so so that's that's qualifying it so swift right. runner he's recovered from alcoholism right. he's doing okay. okay but during the winter of 1878 swift runner and his family were starving okay so he's asked his family to come and join him i believe that the his wife's mother was there as well right his eldest son has died He's 25 miles away from emergency food supplies at a Hudson's Bay company post. Mm-hmm. All right. So that's probably about a day, a day travel. Yeah. yeah okay. Probably, yeah. If you're running like Instead me, like of it's traveling like on foot, a few hours, rather I'd right, run that, no problem. But yeah, go on. Oh, yeah. Well, you'd be very <laughs> zippy, very <laughs> zippy young fella. Um, so Swift Runner. Instead of walking out to this uh, to this emergency food supply, he butchers and eats his wife and his five remaining children. Nice. Um, given that he resorted to cannibalism so near food supplies, and that he killed and consumed the remains of all those presents, it was revealed that Swift Runner's case was not a case of pure cannibalism as a last resort to avoid starvation, but they said it was rather a man who had been overcome with wendigo psychosis when he did eventually come back uh to the tribe that has sort of you know gotten rid of him let's say for for uh disgracing them he, he was getting into a lot of trouble with his alcoholism uh i think initially he said that they had died and people were like that's a bit sketchy right but eventually after they uh 
eventually after they kind of say, hey, Swift Runner, your story's got a couple of holes in it. Um, he, he does confess and he's eventually executed by authorities at Fort Saskatchewan in Canada. So it's, it's, it's the most famous case of Wendigo psychosis. And I guess the part that's really telling is that obviously, look, he has some sort of issue with alcohol. That's fine. Mm. Um, but the fact that he, he decides to kill you know, several people who he loves when he's so near to get food supplies, when it's just a day away, you know, it's, it's very strange. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, like for sure, uh, even including mental illnesses and including alcoholism, including schizophrenia, including all of that. Um, I don't think I've ever heard of a case where someone eats their whole fucking family. So mm. is it is it a case of, I wonder... Um, so do you know with sort of Catholic religion and all that, so like there's like the, the possession and like exorcism yeah. and all that type of stuff happens like there's a there's actually like an offshoot of mental illness where people feel like they're divinely you know taken over and all this sort of been possessed by the devil and mm. they act more possessed there's a name on this and i can't remember what it is so i'm sort of butchering it but th there is an actual thing like where you basically it's like a divine form of schizophrenia where you think you're like either possessed by the devil or you've been influenced by God and like that uh, mm. they're controlling your actions. Is it possible that because Wendigo is part of Native American mythology that someone that had schizophrenia or something like that would be more inclined to behave in the way that, you know, Wendigo was described to him? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's absolutely possible. I know... Um... <clears throat> that I've read about cases of people who went into manic episodes who, mm. for example, some of them might be, they, they sort of thought that they were connected with God mm. in some way, um, whether they felt connected to everything and stuff like that. Um, it was also, um, you know, the opposite where maybe you have like a, a manic episode, but it's like a sort of a nightmarish manic episode. Uh -huh. So you think maybe there's, it's a, paranoia about demons and there's lots of when you see a lot of these uh these episodes there's lots of religious iconography that go along with them so whether people are afraid of demons or they feel like god is with them or judging them or something like that i suppose again it comes down to that those archetypes that are in our culture you know we're we're like there's there's religious iconography all around us and it's woven into our dna to a certain extent mm -hmm. as well and um, now i would just say as well I certainly don't want to diminish, you know, if anybody's listening who has had like an experience like this, I don't want to diminish that and just kind of go, oh, well, that's such and such a thing. And, you know, that's that. I think everyone's experience, whether it's whether it's based on something that is sort of interdimensional or whether it's, you know, some part of your brain that's firing in a certain way. I think there's still an element of uh, what would you say? there's an element of truth in it or an yeah. element of your, your mind is showing you something, trying to well, communicate with you in some way. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. For some, and it's trying to maybe communicate it in this religious way as that, you know, that's, that's what's woven into your psyche. Mm. Um, yeah. so it, it could be parts of that. Now, on the other hand, <laughs> to play devil's advocate, yeah. uh, I don't know if you've ever read, read the book, the right by Matt Bagley, I think his name is Baglio, maybe. No. Um, but it's basically that that movie with Anthony Hopkins based on it. But it, it's it's a it's a memoir. Well, not a memoir. It's a biography, I suppose. But uh, a guy wrote it on behalf of this Vatican priest, mm -hmm. and he is an exorcist. And he talks about the various um, the various times he's had to perform the ritual or the rite mm -hmm. on yeah. someone who's succumbed to a demon possession. Now, what they say in that a lot is they say, look. 99% of the time this is some kind of mental illness mm -hmm. you know 99% of the time just something in your brain is not firing right uh, and, and this is a consequence of it but he does say you know that 0.1% or that's that's that 1% that or whatever it is he says then it is like there's there's something has come into you from a different dimension something has possessed you um and there, there's a lot of stuff in the book about faces taking on these strange reptilian um, 
gestures like the face actually kind of morphing a little bit right. people coughing up nails and iron um yeah, but lots of really creepy paul stuff about that and we're probably an episode that's true i bought paul, paul from town he lives in our town he, he used to put nails up his nose and all mm. and <laughs> he looked like he might have had an old demon in him you know <laughs> <He's>, um <laughs> yeah, maybe so. but i mean i guess i guess the way we like obviously we can describe we know that the brain controls everything so we know that whatever goes on in the brain is what goes on with you let's say you know mm-hmm. you, you tweak a part of it and that that causes something to happen i suppose what we don't know is and it's the same with sort of mental illness and, and stuff like that is is this stuff a, a, a perceptional bit especially with the kind of like you talk about dmt and all that sort of mm-hmm. stuff is it wiring your brain into maybe a different sort of wavelength that you can't see under normal circumstances or is it something that's chemically not firing properly or is it more complicated than that where it's neither black or white it could be a lot of gray areas where there's different things happening like i I, i'm not really sure and i'm someone who's a bit mental anyway so i'm (laughs) So it's it's hard to know because like like even say like a dog or a cat like they if you were to view the world through their eyes it's obviously entirely different like uh they see on different color spectrums they see differently in 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 the dark etc etc so even just those animals that we know and love and we see every day they view the world through a totally different scope than what we do so their reality is different to our reality for example the mm. eyes are not the dog's primary sense it's his nose and for him a smell is like uh an urge and like his nose will seek out an urge and it will say right this is okay there's the smell of food that's like a strong urge i'm going to follow that urge so it's like a totally different type of reality for them whereas ours is is you know sight is our primary sense and things like that so it's all based on what we see so it's hard to know, but I think with with um, most of it, yeah, it is mental illness, and I think I think the thing with mental illness is it's very varied and and it can alter perception. But the the bigger question, I suppose, is what is mental illness and why does it happen? Mm. And, uh, there's there's a lot of things that we just don't know, and I, I think yeah, with drugs, it's a whole other question of like, yeah. is it opening your I, mind? I would say or, this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There is there is some interesting case studies they've done say with with schizophrenia in so in in developing countries a lot of time when someone has um that kind of a crisis that kind of a a a psychotic break let's say their way of treating it i'm not saying that drugs are bad or anything like Mm -hmm. that like i'm just explaining something here but their way of treating it doesn't involve medicating someone to the eyeballs right it's basically they go and live with shaman for a while there's a lot of the community sort of rallies around yeah, them and takes care of them. Does the shaman not be giving them bags of Jenkum and all that? <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if he does. <laughs> but their rate of recovery based right. on that, I think they have like an 80-something percent rate of recovery from sort of these these episodes. Whereas in our country, while you recover, you're likely to be medicated for life, you know? Um, I I think, if I'm being honest, that I think our society is the cause of a lot of suffering i think like i have you know an anxiety a big problem with anxiety yeah, you're like probably depression on that yeah you know <laughs> but i think it's a totally logical response to your society like you to be anxious yeah, of course. like there's fucking you know like i'm not anxious about this global pandemic or anything well, like that but society itself is like a big scary engine well, you like, know what i mean the way i look at it is like being anxious is is, is probably or was a very useful evolutionary tactic for people in the wild and for people back in the day it's just that we've sort of um sociologically uh, evolved past the need for anxiety now but yeah, like yeah. anxiety would have been what kept you awake at night while your family slept while you were protecting them in the dark from uh, whatever other tribes or other animals uh, anxiety would have been the sensation that kept you on your toes when you were out hunting it would have been the sensation that kept you out on your toes when you were in any type of bad situation like that so i do think that once upon a time 
having anxiety was a very useful uh adaptation for your environment mm. but now it just cripples you and you want to fucking you know sit on the toilet crying yeah do you know <laughs> and, and, this is, exactly. and this is from someone who i've suffered from anxiety extensively as well you know um mm. I'm, I'm not trying to dismiss anxiety by any means because like i i've i've suffered with it as well over the years um and it, it is i think yeah, yeah. something that um I do think it had a use. I don't think um, it just comes. It also, there is other factors like, you know, it can be how you're raised. You can have just anxiety as a result of that. You can have uh, anxiety from just bad things happen to you a lot in life. And if you are someone who unfortunately has had a lot of bad experiences, uh, anxiety sort of compounds it and sort of reinforces it and it grows bigger with every bad experience. And then you've got an anxiety problem, you know? And so... Mm -hmm. So it's just it's just one of those things. It's like someone say for example someone gets cheated on all the time by their partner and that's what they know. Like they've had that bad thing happen to them all the time. So it's harder. So let's say they've had five, six, seven boyfriends, girlfriends and it's happened to them every time. So then for them it's a way more anxiety inducing thing to even be in a relationship or be around a person. Mm -hmm. Just because they've had that bad shit happen to them. But for everyone else it's not even a worry. Like it wouldn't even be something that enters mm. their brain. They wouldn't even think about it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I think like on the one hand, you might have genetics that are more predisposed to anxiety. And then as you say, your environments can kind of cause it to come on and that that probably goes to be honest I, I think that if if it happens on a micro level it probably happens on a macro level so i'd say the same not the same triggers exactly but the, the same sort of uh, formula that creates anxiety in people is probably the same formula that creates any other kind of mental illnesses you know partially genetic partially environments uh, partially societal but i do think i think our society has moved far too fast for our biology to be yeah, able I to agree. catch up with it i agree because if you put someone you know, in um a nature environment <clears throat> most times they'll feel better like if you mm -hmm. if you pick someone up that's feeling shit and at least it worked for me when i was younger and, and this is if, if anyone listening suffers with anxiety or anything like that this might help it might not work for everyone but it definitely worked for me was to just go to somewhere either with your friends or on your own somewhere in nature and just sit and chill and just look around you and see that life is actually quite simple and mm. not only is it quite simple but it, it, it continues regardless of all the other bullshit that might be surrounding you so it, it can, that thought can be kind of reassuring and at least it was for me anyway whenever i was at, in somewhere like quiet you know we we are lucky here in wexford that we have quite a lot of naturey type of areas around us uh that we can sort of go to and just sit reflect chill you know if you want to take pictures take pictures if you want to just read a book read a book but I think that stillness of life makes me feel better. And mm. I think for a lot of people that are probably in um, a sort of buzzy type of place with a lot going on, uh, it will definitely increase anxiety. So if you have those facilities available to you, definitely do try and get out in them, you know? Yeah. And, you know, there's there's so many different ways that you can be helped as well like whether you know maybe medication helps you a lot maybe some counseling helps you a lot maybe meditation helps you a lot maybe for me the biggest thing that helped me is i just stopped giving a fuck about stuff yeah. and i don't know how it happened i was just like well you can't control anything so like why do you worry about controlling anything and it just sort of you know and again like i've had it since i was a kid so it was like it was just a, it's i think the best way to view it is like it's part of a journey you know it, it's not something to even be beaten and I do think a big reason that you don't have this stuff existing as much in, in sort of, say, countries that wouldn't be as developed is we are constantly distracting ourselves from how we feel no, with absolutely. whether it's with video games, with books, with like everything. If you are in a place where you just have to sit with your emotions, yeah, emotions can be difficult sometimes, but they're not there to hurt you. They're not no. there to like try to make you want to kill yourself or anything. They're there just to say, hey, hey something isn't right here. And if you can sit with that emotion and allow it to kind of come through you and to try to understand it, you can actually get some good insights to yourself, you know, because it's not, I always think of emotions. They're like, it's like a puppy, like it's just running around and doing stuff, but there's no logic to it. No. Well, there is a sort of yeah. emotional logic, but there's no like, I better get to work at nine logic. So try if you can sit down, like you say, if you're in a forest or something, that's time to yourself. And I think there's people that live maybe more around those areas and you're more, 
so sort of solitude is like the nice loneliness if you mm. like mm. um but yeah to just get comfortable with yourself and being relaxed and feeling what you're feeling you know and then if it's overwhelming man get yourself some help do what you need to do you know and it's out there for you and you're you will be fine and um, but there's so many different ways to come to terms with how you feel like i don't really have anxiety very badly at all anymore no. which is great and maybe Maybe it'll come back, maybe it won't, but like it's okay, you know what I mean? It's just a feeling. I think I think most of the time is what you have to question. I think what helped me a lot as well was just questioning like why uh I felt the way I felt at a time where I felt I needed something, you know. It's like, okay, well, why do I feel and like actually try to engage with that thought and try and get deeper mm. and deeper and deeper and, and try and really get to the root of it in your own head because I think yeah. as soon as you understand it it sort of opens it up a little bit or, you know, you can sort of rest with it. And also, sometimes emotions are just emotions and there's no real understanding them. And sometimes you just have to write it out. And sometimes <laughs> That's it's, true as well. So yeah. Sometimes you want to just go and do dumb shit and like that and that can happen. And maybe that's just you and that's how your, your makeup is. But even if you understand that, that helps. It's like, oh, I need to do dumb shit. Okay, well at least then you know that you need to do dumb shit so maybe you can mitigate bad things happening to people around you by knowing that you you have to do dumb shit you know what i mean and then some people do dumb shit yeah. and then never know that they're hurting people when they do it so you know th- yeah. this is this is always the thing and, and and i i think really knowing about it helps but um yeah so if you ever get the wind to go we've just basically t- told you how to get out of it but uh Eamon, do you want to tell us about the jack fiddler case the Jack Fiddler. I, I will. That was a massive digression. But uh, yeah, anyway, hope everyone's keeping well. <laughs> Tough times, but stay together. We're going to be okay. And uh, we're all here for each other. Okay, the Jack Fiddler case. So a well-known case involving Wendigo psychosis was that of Jack Fiddler, an OG Cree chief and medicine man known for his powers at defeating Wendigos. In some cases, this entailed killing people with Wendigo psychosis. As a result, in 1907, Fiddler and his brother Joseph were arrested by the Canadian authorities for homicide. Jack committed suicide, but Joseph was tried and sentenced to life in prison. He ultimately was granted a pardon, but died three days later in jail before receiving the ru- before receiving the news of his pardon. So, some researchers argued that essentially Wendigo psychosis was a fabrication the result of naive anthropologists taking stories and relating to them at face value without observation. Others have pointed to a number of credible eyewitness accounts, both by Algonquian and others, as evidence that Wendigo psychosis was a factual historical phenomenon. So basically with this Jack Fiddler case, Mm. he was like a shaman that would try to get the Wendigo out of you. Mm -hmm. But if he decided that, you know, you were sort of unturnable, he would kill you and in which case the canadian authorities were like whoa <laughs> yeah. stop it um so which is basically what happened to him but the frequency of wendigo psychosis cases decreased sharply in the 20th century as boreal algonquian people came into greater and greater contact with european ideologies and a more sedentary less rural lifestyle wow. so that's interesting what we were talking about with iconography and all that mm-hmm. The frequency of Wendigo psychosis cases decreased sharply in the 20th century. Um, I'm reading the same line. Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> so, however, <laughs> however, Wendigo creature sightings. So this is where we differentiate between the spirit of the Wendigo, which is the thing that gets in you and makes you eat people, mm-hmm. versus the actual Wendigo, where we talked about the start, which has the deer face and the antlers and the, the mm-hmm. emaciated humanoid um, figure. So, Wendigo creature sightings are still reported, especially in northern Ontario, near the cave of the Wendigo and around the town of Kenora, where it has allegedly been spotted by traders, trackers and trappers for decades. Hmm. There are many who still believe that the Wendigo roams the woods and the prairies of northern Minnesota and Canada. Kenora, Ontario, Canada has been given the title of the Wendigo capital of the world. Sightings of the creature in this area have continued well into the new millennium. Hmm, so that's kind of interesting. I suppose I'm just thinking myself, like if the two of us were to go um, 
Wendigo hunting, which is always a possibility. You know, we, we might end up going hunting Wendigos at some point and making a movie about it or something. So uh, the, the, the issue that I'm running into is I, I'd imagine in those areas, there's a lot of deer and elk and stuff like that, right? So Yes. Like, so, yeah, so it's going to be, you know, there's going to be a lot of sort of mishaps and miss sightings and stuff. It's kind of like um, looking for Bigfoot in sort of a place where there's a lot of gorillas. Do you know that kind of way? Yeah, I mean, is it possible that you could see a deer that's up on two legs for whatever yeah. reason, yeah. and it just looks like a giant guy? Yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of uh, a lot of uh, bears that are kind of obviously they're not bipedal, but they're walking on two legs for like bears can do yeah. that, um, and it would be easy to mistake them as seven or eight foot hairy men, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah it's interesting uh, it's definitely worth looking into more <clears throat> wendigo cases i think um for sure and so at least now people listening as well know where to look and they can go out and try and find Ooh. send it send in pictures of wendigos please actually that'd be pretty cool um, that would be pretty cool so yeah i'm going to talk a little bit about the changeling which is an irish case of wendigo psychosis so one close to the heart um so in 1850, a similar account, also from Ireland and published in 1852, noted, about a year ago, a man in the county of Kerry roasted his child to death under the impression that it was a fairy. He was not brought to trial as the Crown Prosecutor mercifully looked upon him as insane. There was like, ah, this <laughs> yeah. fucking bastard is mental. Um, so the author of this brief note, Sir William Wilde, was Oscar Wilde's father. So... There you go. Um, I also have a little interesting side note here about uh, cannibalism during the Irish famine. So if you want to tie that in with possible Wendigo psychosis, it's definitely there. Um, I just, upon reading about Wendigo, when when I was reading through Eamon's notes, I was like, hmm, I wonder, obviously Irish people had a lot of famine, so I wonder was there any cases of cannibalism? So there are at least two that we know of um for sure uh excluding the one i just talked about actually so that's three i think so um oh. cannibalism was likely practiced in ireland during the famine professor cormac O'Grada of U- university of college dublin told a new york conference on world hunger at fordham university O'Gra O'Grada, i suppose a leading expert on ireland's great hunger said that there were many r- rumors about it in ireland but one documented report involved a John Connolly in the west of Ireland who came before the court on theft charges. In the course, in the course of the prosecution, it emerged that the family was in such desperate straits that his wife had eaten some of the flesh off the leg of the dead body of her son. The son's body was exhumed and it was discovered that the flesh was indeed missing. Connolly was immediately discharged, or grade and noted, as the desperate condition of the Irish famine victims was taken into account. So at the time, yeah, you're 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 talking about like uh, such a bleak um, time where there was no food for miles and people didn't have the means to hunt. And as well in Ireland, like it's not like we have this dense wildlife or anything. So like very, very tough um, time for the Irish people. Another case of cannibalism was reported in the Times on May 23rd, 1849. In Mayo, a starving man was reported to have extracted the heart and liver of a shipwrecked human body cast on shore. Oof. That sounds fucking nasty, Yikes. doesn't it? Salty. Oh, yeah, man. Like, that's just sounds fucking <laughs> grim. <laughs> Get bits of fucking crabs and all off the body and shit and eating them as well. Um, Yikes. But, yeah, so that so that, those are just two cases of possible Wendigo psychosis uh, in Irish famine. Now, whether you want to say it's the Wendigo, the beast, or if you want to say that it's basically, yeah, like a um, hunger-driven hysteria i suppose uh it's up to yourself Ooh. but uh in, in medieval times similar cases were blamed on the devil so is the wendigo a similar type of superstition to help explain the darkness of human behavior and mental health issues kind of like what we talked about oh yeah pretty much yeah like it it seems i mean to me it seems that way do you know what I mean? The like that these things are it's it's behavior that's completely transgressed against them, um, you know, against the community. And uh, I suppose in one way, it's easy for people to blame something that is other 
because yeah. it it helps you i suppose to deflect from the fact that you know inside we're all like we were barbarians and mm-hmm. it's in our genetics like we like violence we like it's in our it's in our dna to like violence it's in our dna to like sex it's in our dna to like those really primordial kind of things and <clears throat> You know, I suppose it's easier to blame something else, maybe for when that bubbles to the surface in people, mm. um, especially in cases like this. But you can see, at least with these, these are people that are pushed to the brink. You know, these are people that are right on the edge of sanity. Because, I mean, if you if you're starving, if you're, I mean, your body can't sustain itself anymore. This isn't like you just haven't eaten in a day or whatever. No. This is serious. This is famine. This is this is a point where like you would look at your own child and you would want to eat part of them because you you're that hungry. Like, can you imagine what that's like mentally? Yeah, you're out um, eating fucking lumps of cat shit in the fields and all that. Like, you're just kind of completely mental. Like. Yeah, like you'd go mad. It's like the same way people who are, who can be um, lost at sea. Obviously, drinking salt water will make you hallucinate and everything but you're so thirsty you would drink the salt water which i think dehydrates you more but there's you crazy, lots yeah. of you know cases and stuff like that yeah it makes you crazy but again you know you're like i mean whatever about hunger like water we will die of thirst far before we'll die of hunger so water water um, everywhere yeah, so let's have a drink you can understand why it would happen <laughs> do you remember that episode of the simpsons say. I don't think I do. There's an episode of Simpsons where Homer, Flanders, and uh, I think Bart <laughs> get trapped at sea, and uh, their uh, Homer keeps drinking salt water. It's pretty funny. <laughs> he just ends up going crazy. It's one of the really old episodes, but it's a classic. Right, it's right. It's a classic episode. It's so fucking funny. Eamon didn't watch The Simpsons when he was a kid because he used to have to play on an abacus. Made out of mm, no yeah because <laughs> when you move the because it would tell you how much you had from left to right so if you move them to the right you'll be like oh the right has five and the left has three but then <laughs> if you moved more ones from the left over to the right then the right would have more than left and you would have hours of fun because <laughs> you could move from the left to the right oh. and it would be like no, they're even now they both have four it was like oh my god this is incredible so it's really good fun to actually play with an abacus um and there's, there's, uh, yeah, there's, you know, so I enjoy it a lot. <laughs> um, but what, what about the actual Wendigo? What's the crack with him? Oh, uh, the, the actual Wendigo. So I will say it is actually quite hard to find actual Wendigo sightings. Right. Like if you look when I was, cause I know we haven't done the episode yet, but I did research for the Yeti yeah. episode and I was able to find a really good video for that one mm. where like you can, um, you can see you know it could be a guy in a suit but it looks really good the way they've done the video Mm -hmm. i went looking for wendigo videos or wendigo images or anything to do with wendigos and i don't know man it was like loads of lads who were 15 down in carrig forest pretending that they saw oh what's that is it wendigo right or like you know when you see people walking towards something yeah, and you don't see anything move. Like it's just like there's a tree, and then someone just goes, "Oh my god, what's that?" Yeah, and yeah. starts to run away. Like that was all I could find, you know. Okay. So there's apparently, um, back in the 1800s through to the 1920s, in a town called Rosio, Rosezu, Rosezu in northern Minnesota, there was loads of Wendigo appearances. Um, and apparently each time it was reported an unexpected death followed and then finally after the 1920s it was seen no more um, hmm. maybe it was just there to bring on the Great American Depression I don't know it could have been the harbinger of the depression yeah <clears throat> maybe I'll tell you here's 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 food for thought right. um, so we have the Wendigo like psychosis you know that kind of gets into you and, and um, makes you eat the meat do you think that maybe after these people die or they're uh, Maybe you don't die or you're, you're, you're executed or whatever. Do you think that you can maybe come back in some way? So if you eat the meat and you're not caught, maybe you morph into a Wendigo. And if you don't, like if you do get caught and they execute you, maybe you kind of rise from the grave in some way as a Wendigo. And then you become the walking demon. That's possible. I just want to make a note that my motherfucking neighbor is <clears throat> using a power washer at 20 to Ugh. 10 at night. Not that it matters, because, <laughs> but I'll uh, edit that out. But who the fuck does that? 
Like, uh, yeah. I hope you power wash your electricity box and all <laughs> the sparks go into your body and you fry, fry, fry till the break of dawn. We're going to eat your heart and turn it to when it goes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so whatever about that fuck all that shit i could edit that out anyway it doesn't really matter but um so what's interesting about the wendigo is that it's both a spirit and that it sort of possesses and tempts and it's supposed to be an actual being as well and the mm. two have an interconnected relationship where the spirit is non-corporeal and possesses the human so evan has provided a great little chart here i wish people could oh uh, man this chart <laughs> i love this chart because it's like the most unnecessary chart ever like i, 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 I just I, love that the guy I, did this i had the notes up earlier and uh, i just I, I went to my girlfriend i was like look at the fuck look at this fucking bullshit <laughs> i was like look at this bullshit he's had her putting in these notes but uh oh. it's basically it shows the wendigo entity is a little red dot and then there's on the right then there's a human <laughs> body with human consciousness and that's a blue he is dot. a blue tell yeah blue dot yeah, yeah and so there's two arrows and they point to the next body which has a red and blue dot and it says incipient possession or incubation human consciousness is still present but wendigo entity is beginning to exert influence over the host this is the point when symptoms of possession begin appearing and when the victim is most likely to benefit from attempted aid so then it goes on mm -hmm. the arrow the the arrow goes on to the next <laughs> form which is a silhouette of a person again except this time he has devil horns and he has the red circle and the blue circles after leaving him uh, which is his human self I guess the full possession or Wendigo manifest the Wendigo entity has forced the human consciousness out and now has complete control of the host body at this point physical changes to the host body appear the human consciousness likely resides indefinitely in the same non-physical plane from which the Wendigo came mm -hmm. so, so here it is could it be like the Lion King where the, the Wendigo spirit gets into the human body, turns it to Wendigo, and then the human spirit turns into a Wendigo out in the same plane. And then that's how it, the circle of life keeps going. Mm. Yes, I mean, uh, it could absolutely be. Uh, really, the, the important question is, does it matter? Uh, and the chart... Not really. <laughs> the chart is not out like it's like a fucking health service. Like, Do you, uh, you know that this... this this chart is that's remember i was telling you there's the that website and it has like it's a really serious wendigo website it's like ah, yes, wendigo's okay. fucking here son so i got it from there but it did make me laugh because it was kind of like a, it's kind of like trying to be really serious and trying to make a <laughs> make an infograph over something it's like yeah so you get possessed and turn into a wendigo like that's like, effectively what everything is saying yeah yeah like it, it's like it's weird it's like there's something that you see on a fucking coronavirus pamphlet or something that doesn't like it's kind <laughs> of it's a bit it's a bit much like but uh you think that the wendigo would get onto you if you got within two meters of it or if you didn't <laughs> cough into your elbow i think i think he'd probably welcome you to get closer to him to be quite honest or maybe he might be a bit pull off <laughs> he might be a bit like what the fuck is this guy doing he, maybe that might be a way to actually get rid of the wendigos get a bit too yeah. close to him lick him or try and bite him or something maybe if you try and eat a wendigo he might uh run away or something or um, if you say you're gonna possess him yeah he'd be like what the fuck yeah exactly yeah so what what should we do when we see a wendigo Eamon? so now that you know well obviously the first thing to do we've just discovered is you chase the wendigo and say you're you're fucking possessed eat him ass, ass blood <laughs> and just chase him yeah straight straight in no kissing um so <laughs> according to legend it's nearly impossible to escape a wendigo they're hunters by nature they're extremely fast they allow nothing to get in their way of that never-ending hun hunger even if you could escape the physical damage which is highly unlikely the very fact that you'd encountered another worldly wendigo would probably leave you mentally vacant okay. and wendigos hibernate for months or years but when they stop hibernating they will cut through everything they will just eat everyone ass 
first, so, limbs first, whatever first. They don't yeah. mind. It's when when it gets up to ask them out, everyone's getting fucked up. Everyone's getting bodies are getting thrown around, limbs, Mickey's flying in the air. It's, mm. it's, this is uh, like this is like shot. German German gangbang stuff. Like this is this is serious. So um yeah, they w- can stalk victims as it for extended periods. Um and mm. thanks to their supernatural speed, endurance, and heightened senses such as hearing, so profound, they can pick up on panicked heartbeats from miles away. Um so yeah, that's um fairly crazy. That's my heartbeat thing, see? Oh, very good, yeah. Pretty good, right? And I, that's like, I didn't even use an app for that. I just <laughs> tapped the microphone. Right. Very good. <laughs> Steven Spielberg <laughs> effects. <laughs> James Cameron. Uh, anyway, James, James Cameron. <laughs> uh, so once the, chase, once the chase begins, Wendigo is engaged in a torturous game. They bait their prey, releasing shrieks or growls. And this is what I was talking about earlier. They sometimes mimic human voices calling for help. So they can mimic your family or help. someone you know as well. Help me. He's eating my help, ass. Help. Help. If I ever hear, I'll just hear like, hi, Cornwallis. And be like, <laughs> oh, that's the Wendigo pretending to be Rob doing an impression <laughs> of South Park. <laughs> so. <Howdy ho. laughs> so when the hunt begins, uh, a Wendigo is like, right, we're getting it. Wendigo's on it. So he'll race after its prey, upending trees, creating animal stampedes, uh, stirring up ice storms and tornadoes. So apparently these guys are just like storm from X-Men, but like mm. less hot. So, yeah, he's like basically the harbinger of, of famine really mm. as well. So like he fucks up everything so that no life will grow there and stuff like that, I guess. Yeah, seemingly. Yeah. Um, don't be fooled into believing you're safe indoors. The Wendigo can unlock doors and enter homes where it will kill and eat the inhabitants before converting the cabins into Wendigo domiciles for hibernation. <laughs> Did you write that? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm <laughs> taking this from somewhere else, but was, it's so fun. I was like, Did you fucking write? Are you writing Wendigo domiciles? I'm like, What the fuck? <laughs> Eamon is so slashing through the family. Wendigo has found me. Can I stop the dumb missile? <laughs> so, so weird. Like, um, so, what can you do if you can't outrun the Wendigo? Well, you can't outgun it, I'm afraid. So, no. a wounded Wendigo will just simply regenerate. Oh. Um, so, apparently, and like this is true with lots of other types of folklore, the trick is to use silver bullets uh, or a okay. pure silver blade or stake. And strike it right through the Wendigo's ice cold heart. All right, okay. So silver, silver blades. You can get them off eBay, or you can buy mm. one of them cool-looking knives that they sell in petrol stations in America, or like you find them in like um, those weird shops here that sell like hash pipes and like two pack posters. Um, yeah, you get them yeah. knives with like you know like uh, knuckle dusters and like an elephant tusk <laughs> with like a fucking scimitar blade. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love that you go into one of those places like right can i get um so i'm gonna need to get a bag of spice and can i get what are the can i get one of the the water bong um oh what can i see that sword oh that's okay i'll take that as well um can i oh yeah oh the oh yeah i'll need a grinder i'll need a grinder as well please can yeah, i get a bob yeah, marley poster can I get a Bob Marley poster? Um, can I get a, a wooden earplug for my um, my <laughs> my spacer? And can I get a burlap pair of underpants, uh, please? So I, I yeah. want to go and hunt. I want to go and hunt the um, the Wendigo as well. So I need my scabbard. I need my um, fucking what would be a good one like a rhino, an ivory scabbard, or something like that. Like those it's shops. Like, I love as well that you get the oh they're brilliant man, but you know when you get like the ashtrays <laughs> and it has like it has a picture of Bob Marley if he was in the B you know smoking <laughs> ash. <laughs> <laughs> like a picture of, of like Tupac, but he's all like green and stuff, like it's all like weird and distorted and uh like it's like him on a lighter uh and the lighter oh, yeah. the flame is green. And it works for like two days. 
Um, and you, the the mem- you know the t shirt you get, and it has like the alien with a blunt, and it's all like "Take me to your dealer." <laughs> I went to one of them shops one time and bought a machete just for the laugh. <laughs> 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 I'm not even joking. Me, me, oh me, and the lads, me and one of the lads went in, right? And the two of us bought machetes and we went to his house and sharpened it with an angle grinder. I, I wish I was making that up, but that actually happened. And, like, you know, your man is selling, like, fucking, yeah, like, pellet guns that fire, like, two foot. And, uh, yeah, like, Rizzlers and um, blunt wraps. And then I'm walking out with a fucking machete and, like, a bag of incense. What? Oh. <laughs> what, what were the what were the skins called? Was it OCBs? They were yeah, they're, long they're ones. Like, yeah, they're the cool ones. Yeah, those are like yeah, they're flames. You've got like the the see through ones and all that. You know. Oh man, I made a tree singer, tree skinner with the OCB, so it was really like a sick skinner. Yeah, we used to do that shit. That was like the, the good old days, halcyon oh, days. Oh god, <laughs> scabbards, Hola. scabbards and joints, the, the halcyon <laughs> days. Um, but yeah, so what's the crack with um, wounding the Wendigo? Actually, no, sorry, I got it. Upon wounding the Wendigo, you must take care to shatter it into... Oh, sorry. Upon wounding the Wendigo's heart, you must take care to shatter it into pieces. Then lock the shattered heart in a silver box and bury it in a church cemetery. So if you want the box, uh-huh. you can find like a Bob Marley hash box. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in that shop. When you, when you open that it, it plays like, is this love that I'm feeling? And then, you know, you close it back down and then it stops playing music. But you can get, yeah, you can get you can get that to keep the Wendigo heart in. And uh, yeah, what what do you do with the rest of the Wendigo? So basically, with the rest of Wendigo, you have to dismember it with a silver plated axe. Oh. So you can salt and burn the body and then scatter its ashes to the winds. Um, or as a second option, you can bury all the pieces in a remote location. I assume, though, you could probably just bury it anywhere. Like, if you weren't going to get in trouble, you know, you could just bury bits of the Wendigo in like under the tarmac. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like that's, it's gonna be uh, harder to bury anything in tarmac, but like you know what I mean. I, I don't think it, there's specifically no. need to burn it in a in a remote place. Yeah. So if you do come across one fox and you you manage to kill him, don't stress too much about where you bury him. Just make sure that you have uh like a a weed box that you can put his uh, heart in, and then the rest it really takes care of itself. But uh what about modern sightings? What's the crack with like recent ones? You said did you have trouble with oh, the right? Okay. Yeah. There? So these these are kind of. These were tricky. So the, yeah. this first one isn't really a Wendigo sighting, it's, but it's one that sort of says it was. So in 1942, in Bundakoi, right. the accused, who was described as a superstitious woman, aged 50, was in her house in northeast India, accompanied only by a niece, when in the middle of the night, she saw a form, apparently a human form, dancing absolutely naked with a broomstick and a torn mat around the waist. Taking this bizarre apparition to be an evil spirit or a thing which eats up human beings, Bondakui threw off her own clothes and attacked the figure with an axe. Having succeeded in hacking it to death, she told her niece that she had killed an evil spirit or witch. But on investigation, the figure turned out of that to be of her sister-in-law. Um... What the sister-in-law was doing dancing naked in the middle of the night is not explained in the legal summary of the case. But uh, Bondakui was protected by the Indian Penal Code, Section 79, which stated, Nothing is an offence which is done by any person with reason of a mistake of fact who in good faith believes himself to be justified by law in doing ah, it. And she was acquitted. You can't that's be fucking, mad, isn't it? Yeah, Jesus Christ, like that's ridiculous. That, that can't be a fucking thing. Like, yeah. That's mad, isn't it? That's yeah. So that's that's more like a Wendigo psychosis type yeah. thing. Now, now here's hang on, here's hang on, one. Hang on. First off, yeah, oh, oh, let me oh, get oh. into this fucking shit that you're drawing me here. This bullshit. This fucking. <laughs> I, I see this right. Everyone's done the notes right. Reddit, Reddit user sees Wendigo right. So it's a Reddit account. This bullshit is the most ridiculous. I just read the first two sentences and I was like, "This is ridiculous. This is someone taking the piss." Like here is like totally true, right? It's it's not the subject matter. It's the fucking. It's written as if it was someone trying to be like, you know, an imbecile or something. Yeah, it's written as if they wanted to see how much red they could make Microsoft Word show them. 
<laughs> yeah, basically, it's it's written like it's a, like a, a Halo Two multiplayer game with all the red versus fucking blue going on. In it. It's all over the shop. There's grammar. There's bad spellings, and it's like I'm new here. With like hair is spelled H E A R, and this only happened and like happened has no E in between the N and D. It's just really uh, silly spelling. Uh, he's like he's like hear me now. Yeah. This just happened. He's just trying to. He's just he's probably young. He's just trying to like get it out quicker. Okay, so that's why right. he put two P's and apologize. Right, right. Well, I'm gonna tell you. You could read this fucking one. I'm not touching it. Uh, <laughs> it's a waste of words. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I'm getting ready for it. <laughs> this only happened a few oh. days ago. I'm new here and have a lot of trouble with writing. So advanced ap- ap- apologies for spelling and grammar. So me and my sister were bored one day and decided to go ghost hunting, something me and a few family members do a lot. A lot is one word. We decided to go to a few different places armed with a spirit box around our area. We had a few little responses to questions or just noises that made little to no sense. We decided to go to one of the oldest graveyards in the country that just so happened to be a few roads over from my mother's house. We get there, set up, turn on the spirit box and we wait oh almost as soon as we turn on the spirit box it starts going crazy it starts with just repeating hello over and over again then as clear as anything says my sister's name in my dad's voice we look at each other in disbelief then it does it again (laughs) (laughs) at this point i tune out i don't know why but i just go blank like my body's frozen but i can look around I can faintly hear my sister asking questions and the spirit box replying. As I was looking around, I see something moving out of the corner of my eye. So me being the dumbass that I am, (laughs) stupidly look right at it. And what I see is a brown, almost skeletal creature. (gasps) It was like its skin was tied to its bones. It was creeping through the trees surrounding the graveyard. I looked away before I could look at its face. I didn't want to see it. In one motion, I stood up and turned towards the exit. My sister followed me without asking what happened. Just switched off the spirit box and we left. I waited until we were away from the graveyard to explain what I had just seen. And we both knew what it was. Uh, Interestingly, he doesn't tell us what it was. Anyway, we got back to our mother's house and explained everything to her. Needless to say, she was freaked TF out dude after a while we decided to do another spirit box session in the house with our mother it was quiet for a few minutes until it said my older brother's name who wasn't even there at the time then it switched to his voice which is very distinctive and it kept repeating mom help me help me mom mom help me and it sounded distressed (laughs) (laughs) at this point we turned off the spirit box i had a lot I mean, like, an unnatural amount of spirit encounters, but never anything like this. Yeah, get out of that now. That, and if you're wondering how Eamon did such a convincing American accent, that's what that's his voice in his head. So that's like his inner dialogue sounds like that to himself. Uh, that's that's how, a, that's we should talks. totally go to bed early tonight, Eamon. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So like that, what's that? What was that TV show? The American TV show where the guy always talked in his head. He had like the. It was like the show was uh, basically. Oh, Scrubs was it? No, the well, that, yeah, yeah, that was one actually. Now that you mention it, but it, it, Scrubs, I think, sort of took that idea from another show, which was maybe in the late eighties, early nineties, and it was oh, about a boy. Oh, the Wonder Years. Was it about the Wonder boy? Years? Wasn't it? It was about a boy. Yeah, a little yeah. boy, and he's his neighbor was his crush, and uh, yeah, yeah, he'd be like. Back then, I didn't yeah. realize that Jenny yeah. had yeah. crazy looking tits or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that was the one. So what's this further comment? Is this a Reddit comment again? Oh, yeah, this is another dude. Now, he's better at spelling. He only got one blue line. And as we all know, Microsoft Word can lie about the blue lines. So, opposed usually to, right about yeah, the red so ones, though. Op- opposed to a 12-year-old making up a medical story, this is a <laughs> 25-year-old making up a medical story. Yeah, uh, but a I, 25-year-old with the mind of a 12-year-old. I'll, <laughs> I'll read this one. My father <laughs> saw what I think might have been a wedding all last year. He was no, caught... do it in the accent. Do No, no, stop. All you have right. to do it in the accent. My father, ta- uh, hang on. My father saw what I thought might have been <laughs> a wedding last year. 
for a while. <laughs> he was walking on an exercise trail when he saw a half translucent humanoid walking on all fours crossing the trail ahead of him. He said it looked kind of surprised uh, that my father could see it. I'm like, but very strange. The way he described the moving was that if like a man had been cursed to walk on all four. All right. Okay. So that's brilliant. Great. Uh, Reddit threader. Um, Oh, this is easily the best one we've ever done. I think so, yeah. I agree with you on that one. It's got it all, really. Um, what do we think of the zombie deer, Eamon? The Wendigo, for me, anyway, first, just, I think, is mainly just a, sort of a, a visual or, or a sort of, not a visual, like a spiritual representation of the shit that the Native Americans had to endure at the time during mad bastard famine. You know. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think. I think. Uh. I, well, I mean, I disagree because I think that <laughs> everything we've talked about on this is wrong, <laughs> except for the kid who was <laughs> playing with his spirit box, and then it started talking to him. Uh, and yeah. then when he looked around, there was like a, a thing with skin tied to its bones in the cemetery. Okay. And then uh, it had his brother voice later saying, "Mom, help me, help me, mom." So I think that's probably the only real thing that happens out oh, of everything yeah. we've talked about tonight. That, ma- that makes sense, actually, that you mentioned it. Mm-hmm. Uh, thanks, See? Thanks, <laughs> thanks for clearing that up. But he, no, I, it, like, I think, I think look, uh, same as all the rest of them, the Wendigo could absolutely exist, and there's some interesting cases, like, especially that dude that just ate his whole fucking family. I mean, even if you're to argue about schizophrenia, some other mental health problem, or you're to say extreme starvation caused him to eat. But like this fella, not only did he eat one, he had like a fucking, it was, he, he was like me eating seven Jaffa cakes before a podcast. He just went fucking nuts. <laughs> so he just went, just, so, so it's, you know, maybe there was, maybe there was a real Wendigo. Maybe that dude was the, the fully taken over by a Wendigo. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, like, I, I think that the, the main thing is that, these things are again like mythology that's that is uh trying to describe what's happening you know trying to describe real things that are happening they're trying to describe human behavior but there's a part of me that also almost believes in uh like other forces i'm not going to say it's a big zombie deer or whatever but like there's kind of good energy and bad energy and in between energy and all that sort of stuff like i kind of tend to believe in a lot of i don't know places having power and places mm-hmm. having you know malignant energy or good energy um can someone guess possessed by something bad i suppose is the main crux of it uh i don't think so mm. but at the same time you maybe you can be influenced by by something that's hanging around in your surroundings or something like that i don't know yeah it's about, i suppose it's what you what you view as bad and 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 what you view Mm. as spiritual and what you view as like some type of deity or what you view as some like i mean it's um it's it's absolutely a hundred percent possible and probably did happen that the person did have the wendigo inside them but what is the wendigo is the bigger question is the exactly yeah Yeah. so like the the wendigo to them was real and it did represent something that they seen uh so yeah i mean look it did exist in their head so i mean i suppose it exists now we're talking about the wendigo we're putting it out there into the into the world people are going to start seeing fucking deer headed motherfuckers attacking people soon you know Mm -hmm, it's possible well i mean think of it so like what well, my man's doing a really good job of drawing the Wendigo still, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, I think like, like, look, they called it the Wendigo back then. We're calling it, you know, a mental illness now. Yeah. I mean, let's say another two or three hundred years where we have a better understanding maybe of what that is. And I'm not saying that it's not happening outside the brain or anything, mm-hmm. but will we be able to identify a certain part of the brain that's causing this? Or you can actually have some sort of medication that can cure this or preventative measures or something or is it something that's outside of that or is it are we taking on some sort of energies from the exterior world that is causing this kind of a thing i mean you know i think it's we're all saying the same thing i don't think there's a big giant zombie deer guy lurking around the forest Uh, i think the word wendigo is really just a way of describing a transgressive behavior 
Yeah. Which we might say now we would call it some class of mental illness or, or some class of, uh, you know, faulty logic or faulty thinking. Um, and maybe we'll reinvent what we call that, you know, a couple of hundred years down the line. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I think that's really it. I think um, I'd like to actually just really quickly before we uh, finish up this episode, just uh, give a shout out to people for any man that's left feedback and all is really cool. So if you're still listening, this is our longest episode, actually. So if you're still listening, cheers for the feedback. We really do enjoy it. And uh, it's nice to hear people's opinions and, and when it gets out there. So that's always good. And yeah, we do always appreciate the shares and all that is great, too. It's it's uh, at our uh infantile stage it helps to for us to flourish and grow um so thank you very much it is much appreciated but uh yeah if you got anything to add to this episode Emma, before we finish her up no <clears throat> nothing too much just uh i think yeah, we got kind of serious in the middle of it when we were talking about anxiety and mental health and all that sort of stuff um and yeah just man if you're having a if you're having the hard times even reach out Talk to somebody, you know, don't uh, don't suffer in silence. Um, hopefully this is, if you are feeling pretty shitty right now, hopefully listen to us two idiots back and forth about nonsense monsters uh, made you feel a bit better. Um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully you're doing okay. But yeah, go, go, go look for some help out there if any of that struck you because there's lots and lots and lots of help out there and, you know, you're, you can get better from whatever it is you're going through. Yeah, for sure. Um, I second that motion. And... Um... Yeah, that's about it, guys. Thanks for listening, and it's bye from me. And bye from me. Bye-bye, folks.